welcome to another episode of Get Out of Rap. Uh, I'm joined by a good friend of mine and a friend of the industry known to many. That's David Holmes, the sales director at SSE and author of Leading the Line. Uh, this is a book that I got, I think, as soon as it came out. Or David, you sent me a copy. And I'm really looking forward to jumping in and finding out all about it. But thanks so much for coming back on again, my friend. Yeah, um, let's, let's just get a hat trick now then, Martin. You know, keep it in the get football a sense. Yeah, I need to get the ball, set it beside me alongside the picture of Paisley Abbey there behind me. But no, great to be back and, and have an opportunity to talk about the book and all things contact, you know. Yeah, well, which is something that we, we love amongst other subjects. But yeah, you're right, third appearance and... Um, always so interesting to to talk to you and your and your backstory for those that are watching i'm I'm holding up the book now leading the line and i just want to start with wh why why did you write it how long has it been a kind of idea in your head yeah um so you got one of the beta copies um he used here's a good technical term that's as good as it gets technical wise today martin but the, the why was quite easy i just wanted to pass something on you know i think that really privileged to have worked in some of the companies that I've got. You know, sometimes people use that language and it sounds a little bit, mm, a wee bit cliche, but I've worked with brilliant people. I've worked in brilliant businesses. Within that, there's been real challenges. There's been some not so good moments. But overall, the thing that, that always strikes me, Martin, and particularly at team leader level, there's some amazing people that they'll try to make a difference to people's lives. And um, I was really fortunate as, as I went through my journey and my career progression that, People put their arm around me or they shared their wisdom or just even the company I was with at any given time put me through something that advanced my learning and understanding. Um, but as times went on and I became a more senior leader and I've interacted with more senior leaders across different businesses, the thing that struck me, Martin, is it almost feels like we're not investing as much as we used to. Mm. You know, it feels more of a taken for granted type environment. If you're a leader, all of a sudden you know it. And, and it's a bloody hard job, right? I think that for me, the job's not getting any easier. I look at what we ask of team leaders, team managers, um, whatever terminology we want to use for the role, but first line leaders. Um, typically with teams of 12 or 14, um, coming into the job, you've got the admin side, you've got the leading side, you've got the, the results side of it, and you're like, woof. And I thought, what can I do to can add a bit of value? And, and I think some of that sprung from the conversations we'd had, but also when I first left Sky, I had a bit of time in my hand and I sort of floated the idea, I started taking notes, and it's like all good things that you come back to and and, and, and you go back and add in. So it was a real labour of love, and, and I just wanted to get it out before Christmas. I think I'd procrastinated a wee bit. Um, I'd sent different versions out, I'd taken a bit of feedback, and and sometimes you just got to pull the plaster, Martin, um, yeah. and get it out there. You know, you, it's, I think I wrote the other day on LinkedIn, when is it good enough? And the truth is, um, I think there's still one typo in it. There's a couple of formatting issues in the book, but I'm not going to worry about that. The, the, the context is what's important and not how it looks aesthetically, you know? And I think if I was worried about how it looks aesthetically, I'd have went hunting for publishers and they, I'm sure they would have made it look nicer. But again, I would have lost control. I would have lost my own voice and I wanted it to sound like me. I love that it's been, it's born out of partly your own experiences and kind of people sharing with you and you wanting to share to as wide an audience as possible but also recognizing that team leaders that we all admit are the the or one of the most important kind of stratas in our contact centered you know geological makeup um but the job is definitely getting harder definitely getting harder and it was hard enough anyway back when we did it you know you're thrust into a position where you're suddenly responsible for 10 plus human beings and everything that that entails so i'm really really glad you've um you've written it and and i love what you said it doing it rather than kind of because if we waited for things to be perfect we wouldn't do anything would we no not in my household mom <laughs> and, and like i think there are times where your standards can be high and there's a good reason for that. You know, I think that there are times where detail becomes super important, particularly when it's customers or other people's money or, or, or things that are critical to people's lives. But when you're writing a book, that's not the case, right? When you're writing a book, it's what's the narrative? What, what's the message? And 
and, and actually, if it looks all right, is that okay? And, and I think it is. You know, I, I used to scribble a lot on books, and I'm still a kind of hard copy kind of guy. As much as I'll get this put in a Kindle in the next week or so, and, and it will get done, I've, I've made that commitment to myself to do it. I, I hate playing about with margins and stuff like that, but mm. I, I'm going to put it on Kindle as well as hard copy. But I like the hard copy more because mm. I'll take me notes. Mm. You know, I've got books in my bookshelf up there, and, and I still like to pop them out again going, I've read that somewhere and it's relative to what I'm doing just now. And I like the physicality of that, Martin, which is why I've done it that way. And I've left wee space for people to scribble on. But look, for me, it's there's so much learning out there, right? So you've got people coming on your show regularly who are just sharing this wealth of experience. And, and, and the opportunity as a leader now is to soak it up. But equally, there's a lot of self-help books. There's a lot of very high-level stuff where people have made millions and they're, they're, they're an entrepreneur this or, or they've done that. And that's great. That's absolutely brilliant. And then I really like people with Gladwell and, and the free economics guys and stuff like that because I'm interested in social economics. But sometimes it's hard to distill that down to practical, pragmatic steps you can take as a team leader, particularly if you're new to it, particularly if, to your point earlier, you're thrust in it. That's a good way to say it is. It kind of feels like somebody flings you in front of the bus, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um and, and, and like, I remember taking the role on at first and I, I was bricking it, you know, I was, I was like, what if I get this wrong? What if I say the wrong thing? And, um, and I'm guilty of saying the wrong thing now, never mind then. So ultimately, um, giving a little bit back is probably the way I look at it. I'm, I, I don't think that you and I will be speaking in a year's time and you say, right, so David, you made your first million and you're an entrepreneur <laughs> now. And, and, and this is Thanks what for remembering me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really appreciate your support in the journey, Martin. Um, I, I kind of don't see it that way, you know. I, I kind of see it as if I'm a contact center director and I'm thinking, what can I do? I've got 50 team leaders. What can I do easy? Then well, there's 500 people. Buy some books. Spend two or 300 quid on a couple of books that guys can pick up and share. You don't mm. need a copy for everybody unless that's something you want to do. And I've worked with leaders. They used to give you a book at Christmas. Yeah. You know, they, they, they would think about how you look. Maybe sometimes a bit personal marriage. And I always still like that. And I still do that now and again with, with, with people I work with just thinking, I think this suits you and I've read it. You have a look. Some things they come back, Martin, go, that was, that was awful. I can't believe you, you recommended that. But quite more often than not, it's it's natural and it's aligned to the leadership style. So that's kind of what I'm going for. It's something that can be handed out or handed along or you can buy it as an aspiring leader and go, what what would help me be good at this? Um, and, and I've sort of built it into two parts. One is the work-centric piece. And the second is, is a little bit of my story about how I went from, I, I guess, building cold store fridges to, to leading teams. Um, and then that helped me excel in my career. Because I would always say, Martin, that there is no better apprenticeship than being a team leader in contact centres. Mm. You, know, you have to deal with everything. You, you have to look at commercials. You have to look at people. You have to look at customer. And you have to look at process. You know, those four things alone are, are massive. And if you can learn them... Um, there's not much you can do. And in, in between it, if you do, if you already have poor interpersonal skills and you can't improve them, you're kind of snookered, right? Yeah. Because you need to know how to deal with people in, in a really good way. Um, and the people who succeed best, and I've seen loads of them, and you know loads of them, are doing really well in running, running businesses now because they've used those skills to go on. So I try to distill that into the book a little bit. Well, let's just go, let's just go into that then in terms of the how the book is is structured and what people can expect when they when they get it and open the pages how, how does it flow so i, I kind of set the scene the first chapter for me outside the four words um are around about well just why i wrote it a wee bit i've seen it and i'm quite open about i don't see myself as an author although i love writing you know it's 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 a pastime that i sort of kind of took up um, during the pandemic. It was that and walking. I, I became the Forrest Gump of walking <laughs> during the pandemic, which I've not done as much recently. But the writing I still do, I travel a lot, Martin. So I like to just jot down ideas and thoughts and some of that becomes something, Some sometimes it doesn't. So it kind of, I set out the tone about, look, if you're looking for something that runs in some sort of kind of really academic way, then it, that's kind of not me. I also say I'm trying to speak in my most authentic voice. If you met me in the pub and you the pain, then um, it, it's fairly, sometimes I can swear like a sailor on shore's leave. Not always, but so there's a couple of kind of real-time expressions that I would use or think about 
um, without harming or, or hurting anybody through it. It's just the language that we use. I think that um, swearing in Scotland is it's almost like a comma sometimes, right? <laughs> so it, it, we put that in. But I think um, the story's natural, right? So I start very simply about when you take the role, belief's really important. You know, and, and you and I both know, and we've we'll spoke to lots of people who, and we've all we've all had components of the times where imposter syndrome or am I good enough for this? Can I do this? And I just talk about it. I talk about the fact that generally, if you've became a team leader or you're you're just seconded into the role, which often happens, um, somebody thought you were good enough. Mm. Now, quite often, that's because you were good at the job, and somebody goes, "Oh, yeah, we'll give you a crack." And 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 also, I've worked in a space where somebody's good at the job and can't lead because they don't have the components there. So I talk a little bit about that, but I also talk about the importance of checking in with, you know, your belief's important to your success, I believe, Martin, and getting people to help you with that, making sure you've got allies and, and a network that you can you can lean on uh, as part of belief. And I, and I think that even, even when you're having a tough day, you've got to kind of believe in yourself, you've got to believe you can make a difference. And I I, like, someone just asked me the other day, it's still my favourite quote, which is a Henry Ford one, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's such a great quote. And, and I, I often think of it as um, I put in the book that I play chess and I play guitar, but I've never really committed to it, right? <laughs> never really just went, right, I'm going to do this for, for, for two years and see how good I get. You know, chess was early in, 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 in school that I was playing that and I think the guitar's there. I'm quite aggressive in my nature in terms of trying to learn something and win quickly. Um, but we believe it's different. You know, you, you, you've got to commit to that. You've got to come in and go, yeah, I can do this. Mm. And if you're ever feeling that you can't go away and check about why you can't mm. and, and, and reaffirm it. If you come in every day and don't believe you can do it, the chances are you, 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 you're not going to have a good time. You're not going to enjoy it either, Martin. Mm. And I think mm. taking some joy out of what you do is important. So I, I kind of go there and then it sort of branches into really practical stuff. The next one's planning, right? So you, you've got get a wrap on the go. You've got the, the, the leader community. There'll be days when you think, I'm nailing this plan. I'm nailing it, right? And there'll be other days you're like, oh, my God, I've got stuff coming for all directions. And and I love this expression. I think you see it out there a wee bit more. In, and, and somebody I worked with, I respect a lot, taught me that it, it's called eating the frog each day, getting up and, and, and just sort of kind of tackling the thing you least like to do. And by God, that helps your planning, doesn't it? Yeah. But I've kind of went back the way as I, as, I, as I wrote the book, man, I thought, why have I forgot some of the basics that I learned? And I mean, I worked at Direct Line Insurance, and I'm always grateful for my time there in particular, because that's where I got a lot of learning from a, a team leader perspective. They sent me in a course, and at the time they had the file of facts. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm nice. showing my age a wee bit, you know, I think even though it wasn't quite the, the early 90s, it was late 90s, but the, the reality is you, you took the time to write down you prioritise, you date stamp, you put it in. Obviously, we do a lot of that stuff electronically now. And I've got back into that habit, Martin. I really organise my week so that every week that I come in, I make sure I do two or three things that are important to me, that make mm -hmm. me feel like I've achieved something, that make mm -hmm. me feel like we're, we're, we're attaining stuff. So it doesn't matter to me if you're a team leader or you're a director or a managing director or a CEO. If you allow other people to dictate your time and plan for you, you're not planning. So mm -hmm. I go through that a little bit as well. And then and it sort of moves into coaching, self-development, other chapters. And and the first sort of section, if you like, it's maybe maybe about seven or eight chapters are all about practical, pragmatic stuff you can do and build up from. Now, That's great. It's, it, to me, if you do the first three, belief, planning, and coaching and self-development, which you can talk a wee bit more about, you're giving yourself a platform for success. Mm. You know, and a lot of people don't because they get confused about what's important and trying to please other people. You need a little bit of a selfish streak in there, which is why I'd say buy the book. You know, that, yeah. that's, that's a selfish investment mm. for me, Martin. That's, that's an investment by you on you. But also, if I'm, if I'm a leader of teams, right, if I've got, and I've been in that position where I've had 60 team leaders, do you know what I mean? Spending a tenner in each of the team leaders is nothing in, in a big contact centre budget. But I tell you what, you'll get a, you'll get more than that in your return. You'll get 10, 15, 20 times your return. Mm. So it's, it's about thinking like that as well. Invest in yourself or invest in your people and you'll get that outcome. I love that. If we just um, spend a moment on the thing you said about belief, and it, I think it's a really interesting way to start because certainly in my experience of managing team leaders and my own experience as a team leader, 
at best, especially early on, it was 50-50 whether I thought I could, whether I was going to, you know, sink or swim. Um, as I've got older and been able to spend a lot more time with team leaders, I've actually, I think there's benefits in what you've said around understanding your beliefs and understanding, like, be comfortable with them and then explore the part that says, I don't think I can do it. Okay, why? Why why do you have that? Why do you have that thought? It and then the answer are either going to be things that someone can help you with or they're going to yeah. be things that you can focus on and then just by doing them you're going to you're going to increase your overall belief that you can that you can do the job. But I really like start with that and then of course planning even right now every day in the in the team leader community that's everyone's biggest challenge right it's the the challenge and another thing you said actually made me smile was the grounding you get from being a team leader i i say now as a business owner it's that period of being a team leader that has prepared me for now more than any other any other role because the other roles as you get more senior are laying on different things like strategy or whatever but actually being able to juggle what seems like a, an impossible amount of tasks and dropping them at times and, and still going on, it's it's the planning part that if you don't get that bit right, no matter how talented you are, how much of a people person you are, you'll never be as successful as you, you can be. So yeah. those two parts to start, I think, are really clever. Yeah, I mean, like at the very beginning of the belief part, I put down, do I think I can do this? And then if yeah. the answer is, I think I can, you don't need to be 100% certain. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think that senior leaders should be better now than they were as well. And that's not a criticism of people in the past. I think there are more intellig there's more intelligence out there. There's more support and understanding if you want it as a senior leader, you know, and to check in with it and, um, I, I think the thing that I'm still working on, even now at, at turning 50 this year, Martin, and still trying to improve myself is tailoring the fact that I'm an emotive and passionate guy about what I do. I care about people a lot, but I need to bring balance there. And, and my, my natural process is to use the frustration that I might have and figure out solutions. And I am typically solution orientated. But reflection time is something that I benefit from these days. I think that one of the things that I talk about in the book as well, it's okay to speak to your, your line manager and say, I need a bit of help. Mm. I need you to give me a bit of space for this because you've asked me for 400 things. You talk about the tasks. Now, I believe, I, and, and that comes back to it, your language is, I believe I can do those things, but I need to understand what's your priority so I can prioritize. Mm. And that's why I think that belief planning and, and, and self-development, stroke coaching become one and the same, right? Because... If you've got a team of 12 that each, of, let's say, for example, you've got a mix of experience. Now, we've all been there. We use some of the experienced people in our team to help us. But you get that marry of supporting your team, getting a bit of learning for yourself, hitting a result, which helps your line manager, and it becomes all there. Whereas if you're just busy, if you're just mm -hmm. a busy feel, you don't get them. But belief's sort of kind of really important. And, and I think the other bit of it is, when I'm doing this, is it going okay? <laughs> and I remember <laughs> asking myself that when I first ran a team. And I think the benefit is when I was first a team leader, I wasn't a team leader in service. And I've worked in both service and sales. My first leadership job opportunity was in sales. So from that perspective, you can get a very clear result based orientation, you know, so you can you can track on there. I think service operations now are more result orientated than they've ever been. You know, you, you've typically got four or five KPIs in there. And I talk about KPIs in the book, just for any senior leader out there having 20 KPIs, that's not a KPI, that's just a list of targets, right? KPIs, yeah. the key word is key, um, and the performance indicators, right? We need to use them carefully, senior leaders, and wisely, so that we don't overload team leaders. But I think um, one of the bits that I like, even if I wrote it myself, are, are people <laughs> responding to me, yeah. you know? Because the hardest bit, we believe, is if you're doing everything and people are like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. Mm. <laughs> then you need to go in, check in and use the support mechanism around you. And quite often, particularly early in my career, I had a few people that I could talk to, Martin, and don't underestimate the value of that in any capacity, in any level in the role, because we all need somebody to bounce something off. We need a safe space for it. Um, 
and and I think the community within contact and customer operations, in my experience, always been a really healthy one. Yeah, you've got sort of kind of all the stuff that goes on in every workplace and, and all that. But generally speaking, you're in it together. And sometimes it can feel like, and I think even when I started, there was 300 calls waiting in the queue every day. <laughs> that probably feels more what it's like for call centres now as well. Yeah. But even through a period when everybody sort of stabilised all the contact rates, post-pandemic, a lot of cost call centres are struggling still. But when I started out in telephone sales, you come in in the morning and the little red light came on and it was on until you left. Now, I enjoyed that as a salesperson and then as a team leader, it meant you could make more money and sell more stuff. But customers don't like it and it's not the right thing to do. But as a team leader, that, that, that invertly puts pressure on you. So you need to have other people around about you you can lean on express it and and do it there but i can't stress enough and that's why it comes second in the book how important it is as a first line leader and even now for me to plan properly mm. um, I, i've never had a three or a five or a ten year plan i don't mean that man i mean plan your week and your month ahead and when you've got six things in your day if you've achieved five that's still success yeah right? yeah but Going into a day just thinking, I'm going to let everybody else tell me what I'm doing, doesn't work. You'll not enjoy the job and you'll not be successful. No. And lovely point there as well around how do I know I'm go- I'm I'm doing well? Like you, my first team leader role was in sales. And I found that it, it, I found it interesting, especially afterwards, that you could have a team that was above target and everyone think everything's great where actually that it it might not have been equally you could have a team where they're not at target quite a way away but actually team's doing well people are progressing people are being coached people are loving what you're doing as a as a team leader and again i think these are the nuance behind the role around you know context is important you you get given a team of brand new people you can't be using stats that are applying to a experience group as a measure as to how well you're doing. It's kind of like, how well do I think I'm doing? How well do I feel I'm doing? Like you said, and you, you said the next one then is self-development and coaching, right? Yeah. And that, um, what do you, what do you bring out in that section? So just, one of the things I talk about in planning as well, because it links into because I had to learn this. It's a learned skill for me. And that's what I'm talking about, the guitar. And the, and, and you you know, because you see it in, in the other room that I've got, I've got guitars. Yeah. All. They're ornaments now, Martin. But I think um, I, I I lack discipline in the, is the, and my nature lacks discipline. So I've got to learn that behavior and things that are important to me, like work, for example. So as a team leader, I had to, I had to develop discipline and my plan and approach and, and execute that way. And I talk about execution, delivery and execution. The key thing with execution is keeping it simple and something that you can follow. And I found that format in coaching as well. Now, I don't know, there's, there's probably four or five really big sort of coaching formats out there. You've got grow and things like that, right? But I like to simplify it and, and, and a very easy thing, both personally and for the team. Now, to your point, you could have 12 people on the team and you might go from a one-size-fits-all coaching. I'm going to try this with everyone. It worked on... We do over here, it's going to work on Anne over here. And you get to Anne and she's like, oh, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, okay, what do I do? So you, you need to be able to adapt and, and understand people and, and, and respect their approach and learning styles. But for me, it was about delivering coaching. That's the first bit. Might not all have been the best coaching, ma'am. And from that, I'm developing as well. Then I'm getting people to sit in and I'm going, can you give me feedback? Then that can feel a little bit itchy. When you're starting out to go and ask somebody, do you mind observing me? Do you mind giving me some feedback on what I'm doing? Or asking your team? Because God behold you, they come back and give you feedback you don't want to hear. You know? Um, and, and and again, I think I've talked about it before, but for me, there's, there's two things. One's affirmation, which is you're doing a good job and this is why, or the context is really powerful. And the other's just feedback. Feedback, in my mind, by definition, is negative. You hear people saying, oh, it's good feedback. <laughs> It's not. Feedback's constructive or it's got a negative connotation. Here's the things you can do. Um, but you can use that if it's really constructive. You know, you can use it to develop and get better. And and don't get me wrong, when I was starting out, we, I was sort of kind of, lack of a better term, sheep dipped on a lot of courses. Mm. And I always said yes. And that's the bit that I talk about, about your development. If you've got the bandwidth, if you've got the opportunity and you're asked to do anything, 
the answer should always be yes. Yeah. You might not be brilliant at it. You might not enjoy mm. it, but you'll mm. have experienced it. Mm. So if I think about even way back then, there was a time when I was sent on a course um, at my time in RBS, um, and it was a presenting course, and it was an actor that took it. And, and I've still got that young gal as Scottish first to me, and they've gone, oh, what have you been in? As if as if that mattered, right? The guy's here to impart some learning on me, but I just did a bit of, bit of kind of white boy type attitude towards it. He was brilliant. Yeah. But see, now when I go to present, I'm not worried about it. Now, typically because I'm Scottish, I'll try and slow down my voice. But when I get excited, <laughs> I get busy. And that's another example of little nuances that, that are not academic, they're not mm. massive things, but they're little subtle nuances that you can add to your own approach. But one of the things that I talk about in planning is build time in each week for you. Now, depending on where you are in your career and how well that's going, they can mean different things to different people, Martin. I wouldn't dictate what model works for you for coaching, what model works for your team. You need to find those things out. And there's an unlimited amount of resources out there. If anything, yeah. there's too much. Mm -hmm. So I like to keep it simple. Even now with my teams, I like to come in and ask the question, you know, and what, what is it you think you can do better? Mm -hmm. It's not my job to tell you, right? Because mm -hmm. I can say, you know what, Martin? I really think you could do this better. You could do, you, you do a lot of gym work just now. You could do lifting better, right? And you might be sitting there going, I don't think so, David. I'm working on my legs. Yeah. I mean? yeah. so it needs to be an agreement between you. So you need to understand what people think. Um, as opposed to you just dictating. Now, if you think that people, and I do talk about this, have got a real opportunity in proving something, you need to find a way of coaching that out or sort of bringing it out. Or, and I have been in that space where somebody just doesn't get it. And I've just said, this is what I see. What do you think? And you get them back into it. So I, I think that's a two for one for me with coaching. If you coach other people, you'll improve. Mm. But also, if you look to, you can get other people involved in that mm. to help your journey and help your improvement. Um, and I think, Again, it's, I don't believe that the opportunities that were afforded me for my own development were unique to me. I think they were available to other people. All you had to do was say yes. Yeah. Now, all that's going to cost you is a bit of time, Martin, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're investing and somebody's willing to invest in you as well, then it doesn't get any better than that. And how if, much does that saying yes also mean that you've got to embrace being uncomfortable and everything that that brings you know you talk about feedback it's few and far between I can remember people coming to me when I was contact centre manager and saying I'd like you to I'd like you to observe me and or give me feedback on my coaching style and the ones that did instantly I'm like oh well well done that's great yeah fine let's go for it because they were open to feeling uncomfortable yeah, you've got to, you've got to embrace that a little bit, Martin. You know, and even even now, sometimes when when you see somebody gearing up to give you a bit of feedback, and particularly at this level, you think, oh, okay, okay, you, you're you're knuckling down a bit. But I think if you can get past that, I mean, probably a bit like me, you've you've done numerous surveys as well where people anonymously <laughs> fill in yeah. stuff, and you're like, okay, we'll see how this goes. But I I think that real time sort of feedback is invaluable, right? And Back in the day, and, and I don't think you see it as much now, there was a lot of role play stuff. And I remember thinking, oh no, there's role play. But there was never a time that I did it and I came out and I didn't learn something. Yeah, uh, true. So, so, so you're allowed a little bit, oh, that feels itchy or icky. But if you can go into it with a view of, I will benefit for this, then you will. Mm. And it comes back to the, if I believe I can do it or I can't, then I'm right. If I believe that I'm going to get benefit, I will. I went in the course one time and the biggest thing that I got out of there was the time I spent with the people around me. I learned more for them than the course. Mm. Um, and that was interacting with each other. It was yeah. talking about how they dealt with situations versus how I was dealing with them and, and thinking to myself, if I did that, it would have been a little bit better. And the course was okay. You know, it was re refreshing something. But actually the power in the room was the people in the room, particularly in, 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 in team leader community because, you know, you learn so much... One of the things that people don't talk about when you become a team leader is dealing with all the stuff that happens in people's lives. Mm. Um, and and the reality is none of us are counsellors. And I'm, I'd listen, it's not a job I wouldn't want less in the world than to be somebody's counsellor. Um, but you find yourself dragged into that a little bit. You, you need to you need to be sensitive to what's going on. And I think that I learned a lot because I'm not naturally sensitive either. I'm quite, 
if you say something to me, I just take it in face value. I don't get personally offended often, you know. Um, so I tend to be quite direct in how I communicate. Um, and what you learn is not everybody likes that, man. So <laughs> that's okay because mm -hmm. you need to be sensitive to that. You need to understand that some people need you to take them around the walk before you can hit them in a the punchline. Whereas some people are like, just, you know what, I've only got two minutes, going to just tell me what you want. So th there's a lot in that and you can get that benefit from working with people who are not like you. And again, that was a learned thing for me. I used to love working with people like me that were in doing stuff quickly and executing and, and the rest of it. And part of my self-development was understanding the value that people brought who didn't think like me, who did things different to me, who had a different way of doing it. Because every now and again, I would need that. Or, and mm -hmm. I, I worked with somebody, particularly um, as a senior leader, I've worked with people who are reflectors because I'm not a natural reflector either. So understanding yourself is important for both coaching and self-development. And I think if you get them in the more than this, like, I'm not saying these are the, the perfect order. You do this, you'll be the best team leader in the world. Do these three things and it'll work for you. What I'm saying is you're giving yourself a huge chance of success. If you believe in yourself, if you plan well, and if you coach and self-develop, there's other things that you do, and I talk about them as well. And then I talk practically about my experience with them. But honestly, I, I can't stress enough if you're an aspiring leader watching this or a team leader doing it, or you're a senior leader wondering how do I get more from the team leaders, find the time to invest because too many contact centers are too busy on the delivery and not thinking, okay, let's sharpen the saw here and get people moving a bit quicker because they're working on each other. How do they, how would people approach breaking that cycle then of we're too busy, we're too busy, we're too busy? Um, you mentioned earlier that kind of allocating time for self-development and they could be reading, they could be reading the book. Um, but from a, if you were talking to other senior leaders now, if people are recognizing, oh, I'd love to develop my team, how does it come back to planning? How do they do it? Well, it starts where they need to believe that they want to, right? Um, I I think that somebody once told me people do what they want to do, mum, right? And 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 that's 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 one of those really deep, profound statements that you don't realise it is until you go away and think about it. A, a lot of senior leaders, and I've been in this trap before. You get you get you get fooled into thinking being busy and uh, as the outcome, and it will deliver it. I'll come back to what I think is important about belief planning and coaching again as well, is that if you get the inputs right, in theory, the output should work. Now, you've always got situations. I used to work in mobile, and every time they launch an iPhone, not so much now, the phones would ring off the hook. Well, you, if you plan for it, you'd need to bring in like 300 FTE, and the business is when they're doing <laughs> yeah. that, right? Um, so you just took the hit. Yeah. At that point, you're pulling your, you're, you're pulling your offline time as a senior leader. You're, you're focused mm -hmm. on the delivery for the customer, and for the business. But what you need to be doing is looking at your year as a whole, saying, hey, we know this is a quiet period. This is where we're going to double down on investment for people. This is where nice, yeah. we've got 100,000 in the budget to train mm -hmm. people we should do it. Mm -hmm. As an individual, but you're thinking, right, okay, where am I week to have gaps? And I was taught when I'd done time management training, I was taught um, how to plan for um, time hoovers and um, unexpected events. So you put time in for that in your calendar. Yeah. Now, people have got the habit now, and, and, and I'm sure most people will recognize that somewhere in their own business where people send you an invite, they don't even check your calendar. And, and I learned this from an old boss. He used to just delete, delete them. He'd go, I'm not coming. You've not checked my calendar. You've not even asked me. You've just come over the top. You're like, oh, Christ, I need to go and fix that, right? And, and I think there's a respect out there for people. If you're going to ask for the time you check, they've got it. Mm. You know, and I think if you're really disciplined about yours and say to somebody, I'm not attending if you don't have an agenda or you at least give me the gist of why you want me and what I'm going to do. And I, there's that whole bit about, what is it? I think you get you get your best sources of the world saying stuff like, you should never have any more than a two peaks of meeting or no slides and stuff. Sometimes a slide's necessary to, yeah. to, to wear aesthetics or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes two peaks is not enough because it's a really hard problem. You've got a group of people. But if you're getting invited to a call, somebody's asked you for your time one-on-one, -on -one, and again, I got this from another old boss one time. He used to ask him for an hour and give you half an hour. You know, I need an hour and he's like, no, you don't. <laughs> Get focused. And I think that that's important. It's the Karate Kid reboot with, with Jaden Smith and, and Jackie Chan, isn't it? Your focus needs more focus. Yeah. And that, that builds time. But for, from a senior leader perspective, because I know a lot listening to your show, man, is be courageous. 
right? Mm. When you're getting that downward pressure from some of the team saying, cut your cost or do this and saying, look, if we invest a wee bit of time, a wee bit of shrinkage, I hate that word, but a wee bit of shrinkage and, and we're, 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 we're planning schedule, these guys will be 2% better than they were before in year That's one. It. Yeah. You know, and, and actually, it's the, 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 again, there's, there's loads of cliches float about our business, but that whole bit about what if we invest in people and they leave, and I always like the bit of the reverse of what if we don't and they stay? Yeah. You know, and nobody wants their operation to go backwards, man. Mm. I certainly don't. And, and and I think that at this stage of my career, it's important to me that people get opportunities I was afforded. It's important to me that if people want it, they can develop and progress. But equally, if people have got a job that they're happy with, they can still learn more about it or still add more value. Because not everybody wants to be a team leader or an ops manager or a sales center manager or any any of those types of jobs. But, but I think that the idea that people just do a job and stay in it is redundant in my eyes. You can always mm. develop and improve yourself. Mm. And I think we, we should be encouraging that by creating space for it. And I think that starts with senior leaders. I don't think it starts with team leaders or ops managers. It's directors and manager directors need to invest time and money into people. And if you do, you'll get the return. I genuinely believe that. Mm. That's great. Um, how would you summarize then the sections after uh, self-development and coaching? What what What's the next part? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm checking my own notes here to make sure I've got it right, you know, but I talk a lot about delivery and execution, Martin, um, in my day job as well. I honestly, see if you ask me to put a slide deck together, it's, it's not great. I can do it because I've learned how to do it, but I don't enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy this, I enjoy the dialogue, I enjoy mm. um, the, the conversations. If I'm doing a town hall event or a, a presentation, the slides at the back of me, quite often I'll stand in front of them as well so you can't see them just to be annoying. Yeah. Um, so so from that perspective, I'm focused on the delivery and the execution and the context and the, and, and, and the concepts versus how that looks aesthetically. And I would always argue that that's more important. Yeah. I've worked with loads of people and, and I remember, and you can be dazzled at times, right? Somebody puts this big shiny, shiny up on the screen and bear in mind, I worked with media companies and telcos and stuff. They had copywriters writing this stuff and you're like, wow, how can I not write that? And then you realise they've studied for four years to do it, right? And and then you go to execute the plan, you go, that's unworkable. Yeah. You know, and I've went for jobs and I've had a three-point plan <laughs> and people, you speak to people after and you add 20 things, I went, could you deliver that? And and even now when I, when, when I typically interview, Martin, I'll ask people to say, right, what's your 30, 60, 90 day plan? And see if it's dead busy. I'm just sitting there thinking, that not person doesn't happen. understand. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So I talk yeah. about that. I talk about Magpine. We've spoken about Magpine before and, and getting support. I, I love the idea of borrowing with pride or stealing the bits of silver and put it in your own mm. nest and, mm. and using that. I think I, I've a lot of what I do and how I am and, and how I approach stuff is, is stuff that I've yeah. gleaned from other people. Setting a goal, right? So you talked about earlier about belief, but you still need to know what success looks like. Now, for me, I still do this every year. I, I write down three objectives. I write. I still think in ink. You know, I write it in black and white because it helps me. It's part of my learning style. Mm. But I'll typically write two professional and one personal, or two personal, one professional. I always, it's never ever three or one. Um, and then I'll say, right, okay, am I being successful against this? Am I, am I achieving what I, I set out to do personally? Now, you, all of us, if you work in the industry, will have some sort of targets you get and. And KPIs, God help me, we've talked about it, but keep it simple. If you get anyone fake five KPIs, you're pushing people the wrong way. Yeah. yeah, there's triggers and there's indicators you need to look at and be mindful, but if you believe, which I do, if you get the inputs right in your operation, you're really clear about what, what success looks like, you shouldn't, in theory, need more. Mm. And I think technology's to blame a wee bit, Martin. We can do more than we ever did. Mm. In call centres now, you've got tools like Speech Miner, for example. Not criticising the tool, it's a great tool. But people get, oh, we can tell you this and tell you that. The answer to that, Martin, should be great, thanks. <laughs> it shouldn't be, let's put 15 targets about what people say in a call. Yeah, yeah. Because otherwise the call becomes stilted and less natural. Mm. And, and the least scripted approach to a business model, in my opinion, is still the best. Yeah, because it's more natural. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, and, and so I get that, and then I just talk a wee bit about leading line, other things you can look at, little bits and bobs and, and, and dig into. Because ultimately, if you're really, really focused on your career and you want to do well, there's lots out there you can learn from. 
and, and I would advocate that, right? And, and as I said at the beginning, yeah, you get these very high level books from, from people who made millions. They still say stuff, and I've said it before and I'll say it again. This whole follow your heart thing, that doesn't help you when you're back shift on a Saturday with 12 people in, in Glasgow, right? Um, and you've got to pay the bills and you've got a couple of kids to look after. So I'm not really into that. But if you can find a job where you feel you're adding value, you enjoy it, you're getting outcomes, that's 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 good, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's doing what you need it to do and it's helping you progress. And that's why the second part of the book's my own story. You know, I talk about going away and working on these cold store fridges and, and, and everything that came with that a little bit. Talk about how I grew up. Because each and every one of us as a leader is a mixture of nature and nurture, isn't it? You know, it's a bit of what we're experiencing. And I would always say that the seven years I had at the airport helped me talk to anybody at any level. Because mm. you, I just did, I delivered catering to planes, right? Drove a truck badly, shut the airport for traversing the truck into it one time. But I used to have to speak to pilots and people like that who, at that time in my career, they were really senior people, you know? Um, versus going back and speaking to someone who's in the storeroom and dealing with different yeah. people with different types. So I always felt that that helped me not be fearful to ask the question. And you see people in rooms with CEOs and people, and, and they're, just, they're just people, right? Yeah. Ask them the question. Yeah. But some are better than others, you know, and, and, and we can get any t- talking about that. It's a different day, but... I think if, if you really care about your business, you want to know what your team leaders are telling you. You don't want to find it translated so that the world smells a pain. Martin, you want to get down there into the trenches and find out what's going on. And I talk about that. I talk about mm. things that I got right. I talk about things I got wrong. I jumped out of one job one time into another one, and God help me, that was that was um, an interesting experience, to say the least. Um, and I, I think the chapter's called Fires and Frying Pans. Do you know what I mean? Jumping out of one into the other. But hopefully there's a bit of the stories I'm using, but hopefully there's a bit there where people can go, well, if he can come for that background and do what he's doing now, then that's available to me. And I would say to people, I would, I would reiterate to people, Martin, as it is, you know, I think that I wouldn't say I've got the biggest IQ in the world. I wouldn't say I've got the biggest EQ in the world, right? But the marry of those things works well together, plus the learning equals the outcome, you know? And I think that, there are so many talented people out there. I've seen at all levels that businesses need to invest more in. And I get that the business pressures, it's never been harder to do business, I think, in some ways, because there's a disconnect between the world and the geopolitical circumstances that we live in. But again, it's just about being courageous and brave. And, and I think yeah. as you're an individual, I'd say the book would help you just get a different slant on it, um, a more authentic slant, I would hope. And I'm certainly not saying here that I think I'm going to make you millions. I'm not going to make anybody millions, Martin, least of all myself. But what I will say is for a tenor, the worst that you're going to get is some 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 good advice and a wee bit of a story. So you get you get a two for one, I would say, right? I should have sent them in sections at a five page. <laughs> well, look, I, I'm a I'm a big fan of you. I'm a I'm a big fan of the book. And um I I would thoroughly recommend whether you are a team leader, want to be a team leader, manage team leaders. It is it is worth the money, and like you say, it's written from. It's kind of you're an authentic guy. Um, you've been there, you've done it, you've been around good people. You know, there's no, what's not to like about it. So for people that want to get it, it what's the best way for them to get it? it it's Amazon, right? So like, it, there's a lot to be said about Amazon as a company, but they're bloody easy to do business with, right? So you can buy the the paper copy just now. Um, I'll, I typically post a link on my LI profile, but also I'm going to put on KDP on the Kindle app because a lot of people have apps. So that should be available from the end of the week. But the moment the written copy is on Amazon, just type in leading the line um, and it'll come up. And the six of you there saying it's five stars. So that's good. I think <laughs> I'm, I'm currently 539th on time management on the list. <laughs> So if I can if I can lift that up into top five hundred, that that's what success looks like just now, Martin. But, but it's there. You know it's, easy to buy. it's because it's real. It's because it's real people that are given reviews. You haven't yeah. gone out and and bought them or or whatever. And um, look, David, thanks very much for coming on, sharing your story, uh, hat trick appearance. But it's a it's a great book. It's perfect for for team leaders. Um, and hopefully you'll come back on and do appearance number four, where you talk about the follow-up book. There is a follow-up started. We'll, we'll see where we get to. But what I will do, Mark, look, thank you for having me on. Great to talk to you. 
50 minutes just flies like that. Um, Crazy. But what I will do for the, for, your, for your leadership community, I'll put a couple of author's copies up for grabs. I'll, I'll go on the app at some point and, and say, look, I, I'm not sure how I'll get them to people, but we'll do it. We'll, we'll find a way because I've got yeah. a couple sitting. But look, thank you for having me. Hope people enjoy the, the podcast, but also um, if they get the book, then let me know. Let me know how you feel it and, and what you want me to do in the next one. Thanks very Brilliant. much, Matt. Thank you, Thank mate. You.